Hello and welcome to today's Daily Connect. And as you know, we are thinking about prayer and we are just looking at what the Bible says about prayer and using that to motivate and inspire us to pray and to help us think clearly about prayer. And yesterday we started to think about what's our, what's our spiritual position, our spiritual posture in prayer. And uh, I came back to that key idea that we are the children of God. In every way, every human being is a child of God. But in Christ, we, we develop that idea, it becomes uh, more real to us. We understand what it means to be a child of God. And we looked at that passage where, where we where talked about how we cry out, Abba, Father. And we're reminded that we have a new relationship with God. And that should affect our prayer life. It should remind us constantly that because of Christ, and our new relationship with the Father, we have access to him in prayer. It reminds us that we, uh, we, we have the privilege of being able to have our prayers heard and answered. And then we have the privilege of intimacy with God, closeness to God. And today I want to think about that idea of spiritual posture a little bit more, uh, using a different passage. And uh, the passage is Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10. And I would love you to read that passage. So do please press pause right now and read Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10. Thank you. I hope you've read it. It's a powerful passage and it speaks to us so clearly about the, the transition that we've all made, the kind of journey that we've been on. Because it starts off that you are dead in your transgressions and sins. You are as far away from God as you could possibly be. Your spiritual life had died. And then it goes on to talk about how, because of God's great love for us in verse 4, who is rich in mercy, he made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. And then in verse 6, and God has raised us up with Christ. We have a new life because of Christ. We were once dead and now we're alive because of Christ. But then it goes further. And seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Can you see the, the, how God takes us from one extreme to another? We were dead in our sins and now not only are we alive, we are raised to, to life in the heavenly realms with Christ. And Paul there isn't simply talking about that future hope that we have, that we will be raised to heaven. The tense he uses in Greek implies that this is something that is completed in the past. We are already there. Which is a little bit hard to understand, isn't it? I'm seated in my study. I am not in heaven, in the heavenly realms. I am not there. I am here. But there is something mysterious going on here, I think, with what Paul's trying to say. Even in the same way that we, we don't yet fully experience the life in Christ that we could have. We know that that will be completed at one day in the future. What he's also saying is that the position that we have in the future also impacts today. And that position is that we are in Christ in the heavenly realms. And he talks about it in Colossians chapter 3. I'd love you to, again to read this if you want to, but I'm going to read it for you. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So there's a whole idea again of of we've been raised with Christ and so something changes about our relationship to the heavenly realms because now Christ is there seated at the right hand of God the right hand of any king was a position of honor and a position of power and so we are seated with Christ there Paul says because our life is hidden with Christ and it's, it's, it's hard to get our heads around, isn't it? It's hard to understand when we are such physical beings and we're so rooted in the here and now that in some way to God, 
the past and the present and the future can all be seen in the same kind of dimension. And what is the future for us is also the present for God. And so we are now seated with him in the heavenly realms. In Christ, we are there. But what does that actually mean for us? How does that kind of change things for us? I think when it comes to prayer, it means that we recognise the privilege that we have in prayer. A privilege that comes from being seated in the heavenly realms with Christ. We have, it's not just about access, it's about having the king's ear. If you were seated at the right hands of a king, you had the king's ear. You were in a privileged position. And prayer is always a privilege. And sometimes we take prayer for granted, don't we? And we can neglect prayer. It's so easy to do. We throw up occasional prayers, especially when we're in trouble. And yet prayer is a privilege. We are positioned in such a way that we have the king's ear. We can talk to him in a way that no one else can. It's a place of privilege. It's also a place of authority. If you're at the right hand of a king, you had power. You were, uh, in terms of the hierarchy, you were just one down from the king. Everyone else was under you. And we're reminded in, in the kind of spiritual battle that we're in, that we have authority over all the powers of darkness. And shouldn't that affect how you pray? When you pray, do you pray with authority? Do you pray with a sense of, I am in a place of privilege and honour and power? So, too often we pray kind of really kind of weak, watered down prayers. Not that don't really seem to reflect our position. I want to encourage you to think about that. We're going to talk about prayer and authority uh, at some point soon. But I just want you to reflect on that now, that we should be able to pray with authority. In the same way that Jesus had authority over sin and sickness, and he had authority over demons, and he had authority over nature, we carry that same authority. He gave it to us. And But we'll talk about that uh, in a little while. We also should be able to uh, understand that this new position gives us a different perspective. In Colossians, Paul talks about us setting our minds on things above. That's not just living uh, your life so that you get to heaven. That's about seeing earthly events now from heaven's perspective. And when you pray, that should be your, your desire that you, whatever it is you're praying for, whoever it is you're praying for, you see that situation, that person from the perspective of God. Because if we're to pray within God's will, if we're to pray prayers that are truly effective, our starting place needs to not be from what we see, but looking from where God sees. And God sees things so differently to us. And so we need to be rooted in the scriptures. We need to be listening to God. We need to be understanding things from the perspective of the kingdom of God at work in this world. So it should change our perspective. But finally, we should also be reminded that this is a responsibility. With authority and power comes responsibility. And someone who was at the right hand of the king was often given key tasks to do. They were given responsibilities. And so we have the responsibility to pray. We are called to be a praying people who seek to see the kingdom of God come to earth, who are seeing God's uh, reign of justice and peace evident here on earth. Are you taking your responsibility to pray seriously? To pray for your family, your neighbours and your friends, to pray for this town, for this nation. 
You know, no one can see what you see in terms of what's around you. And what's around you is, is effectively your assignment from God. The people that you come in contact with, the place where you live, not just the streets in that small community, but the town of Southport for us, or wherever it is that you live, that is your assignment from God. And he will reveal things to you about that, because it's no good him revealing it to someone who lives four or five hundred miles away, because they have no understanding of what's going on here. He will reveal it to you. And it's your responsibility to hear and to pray and to seek the will of God here in this place. We are in a privileged position of being both here and also in some way seated in the heavenly realms. And we need to take that seriously because it reminds us that we now are the people who bring heaven to earth. We do that primarily through prayer, but also through our action, through the way we live our lives, through what we declare with our mouths. We do that in all sorts of ways, but it starts in prayer. What a privileged position we have. Let me encourage you today to reflect on that, to read that passage from Ephesians a couple of times over, to remind yourself the place from where you've come, to remind yourself to the place where you are now and to enable you to get your head around who you actually are in Christ. Because when that changes, when you actually really start to understand that, that changes how you pray. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you that uh, you have taken us on such a journey. We were once dead in our sin but now we are alive in Christ and we are seated in the heavenly realms and Lord we don't really understand how that is we know it will be in the future where we will be there where we understand that we will be there but now what does that mean for us Lord I pray that you'd reveal it to us I pray Lord that you'd speak to each and every person watching this that you'd help them understand their new identity in Christ so that we may pray effectively for you. Amen. Do please join us tomorrow and we will continue to think about what uh, prayer is and how we pray. It would be great to have you with us.